you did say Caleb Williams is not special. Can you expand yeah. on that a little bit, Merrill? You know, like, yeah, well, here's what you get for doing a drive-by. And then I didn't realize the word special was so um, igniting. Um, because and that to me, I was like, you got to define what special is. And when you do a drive-by, you don't, you don't get to explain that. In, in, five, in the last five or six years, there's been two guys that have been special. So let me define what I think is special by giving you two players that play that position and what you ultimately have – I like to see in college prior to coming here. Now, just because he's not special, let me just clear this up. doesn't mean he doesn't have a chance to be a very good player and a dynamic player because he does have some elite things, which I'll get to in a second. Okay. Um, you got Joe Burrow and C.J. Stroud in the last five or six years. Now, what makes them special in my eyes? I'm not saying it's anybody else's eyes, but I don't look at – when I'm studying kids on tape in college, I'm not looking at where they're playing. I'm looking at where they're going to play. And that is confusing for people sometimes because I know what environment they're going into. First of all, the field's going to change, okay? Hash mark's going to go narrow, and they're going to play the middle of the field. My guy's as good as your guy. It isn't like my guy's better than your guy 70% of the time in college. Um, I'm not going to get four seconds in the pocket a- anymore, and guys aren't going to be running wide open all the time, okay? Or majority of the time, we'll put it that way. And so you're trying to look for way people that can ultimately play from the pocket. At the end of the day, that is where you must master this game, I mean, the NFL, if you're going to be truly consistently successful. I'm not saying that a guy who doesn't have mobility um, isn't a value and there isn't some dynamicness in that. But nobody is going to run that. They haven't done it yet. There's no quarterback that's run himself to a championship. Um, there's nobody that's scrambled themselves to a championship. It eventually, at the end of the day, you have to play quarterback and you have to be dynamic and good from the pocket. So Joe Burrow coming out, he was very much like that. The way he and these two things matter the most, and they work together. You cannot have one without the other. Accuracy and the ability to process quickly, and then you start throwing anticipation in there, pocket presence, leadership, toughness mentally and physically, which we can get to in a second. Now, from a pocket presence, he is not special. I don't watch him. In fact, his gift hurts him. A a player like him, I've seen this so many times, there is – he has a gift that everybody thinks is exciting and is special, and that is his unique mobility, okay? That's that's not going to win you a championship, and being exciting is not a skill set. Now – his elusiveness is rare. I would argue it's better. He's more elusive than Patrick Mahomes. Does that make him better than Patrick Mahomes? Absolutely not. It just tells you <laughs> that he has that dynamicness to him. Now, the problem with that is when, and he does this playing from the pocket when the pocket's clean, and then when the pocket's dirty, he does it more so. But he'll leave plays on the field. What I mean is from the pocket, you get a coverage, you get a route combination. And I said, they don't do a whole host of this, which is another layer of concern, is they predominantly are a college system. I mean, they're they are, they are as pure a college system as you can get. They are a lateral team, lateral team, lateral team. But they do do some things down the field. They're not like NFL concepts. So you have to look at that as best you can and get a feel for that. Um, he will not make the first throw sometimes because I he, he's got four seconds. <laughs> There's no reason to do that. In, in in a lot of ways, he he processes stuff, as you've seen process stuff, because he's done so many magical things by moving and being elusive. So in the NFL, you don't have that luxury anymore. Like when, when the guy is open, you got to give him the ball. Okay, what makes Tom Brady the greatest in the history of the game? Okay, um, and I'll even get to Patrick Mahomes in a second. He executes plays. When the flat route's there, give him the flat route. When the slants there, give him the slant. Um, and it's then the ability to throw it into tight windows. And even when a guy may look covered, but that is based on his positioning and based on where the defender is, the guy is open. In the NFL, you hardly see – very few people in college do it. Like Patrick Mahal, I mean, uh, Burrow would do this. C.J. Stroud, I would see do this. But keep in mind, last year when C.J. Stroud was coming out, he was the only guy that was a first-round value. I mean, the Carolina Panthers are going to be years in recovery – for what they did with Bryce Young because because wow. he was so limited. And those limitations yeah. aren't changing. I mean, the Carolina Panthers, the Chicago Bears are, are benefiting this. But And I'll tell you this, that you know Caleb's skill set is better than that. Um, but I'll get that in a sec. So just finishing up, 
that's what to me is special because a guy that can transition to the league and play in that arena and they show the evidence in college that man they got a shot to do that now when you look at Caleb the one thing that um, I am telling you is unique as unique as I have seen it and I've been doing this for 40 years from playing coaching and studying his accuracy is unique and that is a gift and the thing that I'm talking about that you, ha- I haven't seen enough evidence to make him special doesn't mean he can't do that eventually. I'm not saying he can't. I'm just saying he will always fight this hurdle of his ability to make plays and move, and can he harness that and break that and make that a part of his last resort versus sometimes I'll just go to it. Mm-hmm. And that right there can ruin players more than it can help players. And there's a lot of things that he doesn't control that are completely out of his scenario. This expectation that he is Patrick Mahomes is going to be an, a daunting thing. Patrick, let's just take Patrick Mahomes came out, came to a playoff team, sat his first year, and those two things are not going to be his luxury. And he had great coaching. And that coaching matters. So there's three things that he has nothing to do with but are going to play a role in this. He's not going to a playoff team if he goes to Chicago. Um, they've got new coaching again, which you know has been some of their biggest issues. You can't be consistent with that. I know of no business that exists on planet Earth where you change every year and you're going to get better as a, as a company or as a unit, as a team, or as an organization. It's just not going to happen. It's nearly impossible for that to happen, and that is what they have consi- consistently done. So that's what I look at special, and um, doesn't mean he doesn't have other great skill sets. I think he processes things based on the college system very well. Um, he does do that, one, those areas of – concerns that you must master to be an excellent quarterback in the National Football League and from the pocket aspect of it. He does enough of that that damage that will be damaging in the NFL if he doesn't learn to develop his skill set and get rid of the football and give it to the guy who deserves the ball. If it's a slant route, give him the slant route. Don't hold it going, well, I think I can get something else out of that. In the National Football League, it's not going to work out for you as well as it did college. And it's not just making bad throws. It is getting hurt, you know. Uh, so, but that is something you can teach. Like, okay, the accuracy aspect, I, you, you can't teach the accuracy he has. That is a, that is a unique gift. And, you know, that, that, can, that cannot be overlooked. And from everybody I've looked for to this point, about six quarterbacks, he is superior to them from an accuracy aspect. Probably as superior as I've ever seen, quite honestly. It, it sounds to me, Merrill, though, that you – I mean, the all interesting – points you still think i mean not elite but you still think he could be a very good quarterback and don't you don't don't you also think i just want to throw this in there too don't you think that his ceiling is higher than that of justin fields because some of these strengths that you're talking about are weak like the the accuracy the processing quickly that's been a huge issue with justin fields and you know fields had the same thing fields had professional wide receivers at ohio state who were wide open all the time as well so i think that that's something that don't all top quarterbacks or any quarterback coming into college they all have to make a huge adjustment for that don't they i mean that's not uncommon well well, well well, I'm like a Burrow and a CJ Stroud when you could see that you you could see that in their college in the college game that they played in their arena they played and they did more pro style system too than USC did so it was clearly more evident there with those two guys I keep on those that, that's two guys out of six years how many quarterbacks would that amount to um, um, <laughs> yes he, I, he could de- he could develop that from that now, the difference now you know that you do have to consider this he's six one these other guys are six three and six four. That that height when you get to about six one and well, once you get six three and six five those things do matter a little bit. That's why I go back to like you know Bryce Young. He's five nine and that never he can work as hard as he wants. He can train as long as he wants. He's never changing that. That'll always be a limit. That'll always be a problem with game planning and the things that he is able to do from the pocket. So that hinders him a little bit um, from the pocket thing. But yes, he could clearly develop um, into a guy who functions and knows how to play there and plays that with, with excellence. I, I don't think there's any doubt. That is one area. That, but, but you don't see that in college right now because he is so da- dynamic in his ability and his elusiveness 
he will lean on that more than just playing through structure. And that's what I'm saying. That, that, that That's a fine line there. And I've always felt like a guy who has that when he first comes in, I actually like that because he gets out of a lot of trouble and he, and he can make some things happen for your team. But at some point, he's got to harness that and take whatever he's done from a mobility aspect and convert it to his arm. I'll give you the great, one of the greatest examples that just happened. Got An AFC Championship game, Lamar Jackson throws a pick. And what looks, I mean, yes, there's, you know, you got two deep safeties, you got the trail defender, he throws three guys are there, he throws the pick, it's a bad throw. It's second and 10. Now let's walk through second and 10 and what, there's two minutes on the clock, whatever, there's plenty of time, the clock to score. Uh-huh. You have, based on the route concepts they have, everything that he should have been reading should have told him, take the drag route underneath because you're tied in, it's just carried the underneath defender. Okay, it isn't just the picky through. It's the circumstances of where you were on the field. And keep in mind, Lamar played like that in Louisville. And he has never not played like that when big games. <laughs> very few teams can get him. Very few teams can get him to play quarterback. So, so the Kansas City yeah. Chiefs said, you know what? We're going to make you uh, play quarterback. Uh-huh. And it's just, it's just my, my final example of how good you have to be from the pocket. Um, and – and, 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 and as soon as you say that, like, well, he's so dynamic. Okay, that, that's great. But that is going to be his greatest hurdle is learning to manage that and not want to go to it. And I'm not going to say it's going to happen in his first year. I would never say that's too hard on a kid um, when he comes to the NFL. Keep in mind, he's got pro concepts he's never done before. You've got defenses that are a heck of a lot better than defense you face. So keep in mind, if you look at the second year, which I did finally get through all his games last year, so I've got some 16 games through here so i feel very comfortable where i am with my evaluation okay. with him yeah. even those defenses played a little different you know they pushed the pocket they made his size a little bit of an issue they kind of understood that he would hold the ball and maybe go to move and run versus get rid of it at times and because they don't do a lot of stuff down the field and certain route concepts there are a lot of bubble screens and smoke screens and you know rpo deals you don't get to see a lot of it but if you the system I have, I can create all of those plays and just watch all of them together. So that gives you a really good feel. If you want to see like, you know, six to ten a game, it can be, you know, you can miss it. And that's why I, I, I group them like that to watch that. Yeah. And so when you watch him just from the pocket where he's going to have to play and be great, mm-hmm. that's why I said he's not special. You know, all those other things I, I talked about him are unique um, and are, are really – I love them about him. Who, who, who's it's your him. top guy? He, who's he's going to have who's that your... hurdle. It, who's is he your top quarterback? Who's your top quarterback? Who, do you have your rankings, yeah. or have you done that yet? Or you know, no? I like, the, like the, no, no, because I'm not done with everybody. But I'll tell I you gotcha. a guy who actually. I'll tell you a guy like Jaden Daniels, the LSU kid. Uh huh. Like he, he actually, I watched him when he started at Arizona State, and that kid has really developed. And they do more pro scout, pro concepts than say USC's offense, and he actually plays from the pocket pretty well. I like, you know, when the Washington's pick, let's, let's put it this way, based on where I am now, um, and I've only went through six guys. I got May done, Caleb done, Daniels, uh, Bo Nix, and then Penix and Washington. And, um, you know, I would say that um, Daniel, Caleb Williams, here's where it will appeal to Chicago. I, I understand what it is appealing to the Chicago Bears or any <laughs> team. Uh-huh. Is, is is true? His his. I'm telling you, it, it's not so much his elusiveness. I, I do, and I and I. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not disclaimer because to me that that is his wild card. Can he manage that and basically control it enough not to let him be a scrambler all his career? Yeah, that's right. that's where I'm getting. Where I can. That's where it can go with a guy that's that good at it. Now, like he's got Barry Sanders type moves. <laughs> Keep in mind. I mean, he makes some moves. I'm just like, oh my gosh. I mean. I don't know, he's better than Patrick Mahomes, and, and you say that, and, then he's. That's right. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, well, and no, that. no problems with the size there either. I mean, six four, so you don't have yeah. to, you know, worry about that. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, um, not Patrick Mahomes, but um, Jaden Daniels. Um, Caleb will, you know, no, um, well, Daniels, he he really plays well yeah. from the pocket. Like you, you would feel very comfortable that you know what he has a good chance to transition because you see him do it in that pocket and you see him function. He's, he's fluid. He's got really good feet and he's accurate, you know? So, and he processes things. Well, the thing that I know that will appeal to a lot of NFL teams is 
Caleb's accuracy is is unique, and and it is you know accuracy is such a critical component of being successful. It's all yeah. those other things that that are variables that you have to address and you have to talk about. And then one of the other things, which you know, listen, if you're still if you, if you get these meetings, you can try to have a better feel for it. But how tough is he mentally? You know, I think he's a pretty physically tough kid to watch him playing some hits he takes, you know. Um, but mentally, because that to me is going to be, will be the overwhelming factor for him. Because let's say Chicago does draft him. What is everybody already going to think? Okay. We just made up for our mistake. <laughs> we just made up our mistake. Well, he's not coming to a playoff team. You know, what kind of coaching? Is he going to get an Andy Reid style of coaching? You know, um, I don't know. I don't know that staff well enough to do it. But I would, listen, I try to assume that he's going to get good coaching, but that's not always true in, in every aspect of things. And then forget all of that. You know, is your team a playoff team? Your division is getting better and better. Packers, right. Detroit. Division's tough. I mean, His division's tough. That division, so, that decision, that decision's not getting weaker. Right. It's getting tougher. You know, and then you don't, you don't, you don't start winning. Well, who's going to take the heat for that? Right. Right. Oh, well, it'll be and the quarterback, right, of course. Yeah, it'll it'll hard, be you know, and, it'll be the quarterback. Well, let me just, let me ask you, Mer- Merrill, because I'm running. Um, I'm going to get in trouble if I keep you on too much longer here. And it here here's the uh, last thing I want to ask you. Do do you think that Justin Fields should that they should just go to bat with Justin Fields, give him you know a nice three year extension? Do you think Justin Fields is the guy that they should stick with? Well, here's what I don't have. Nobody has. I haven't been sitting in those rooms with Justin Fields. Okay, so they didn't have a better feel for him as a human being, as a player, you know, his IQ, his toughness. The one thing I can just say about Justin Fields, which is unfair to all players, and every player would tell you this, especially the quarterback. He has changed, how many coordinators has he had that are consistent? <laughs> None. Right. Well, I mean, he, I, no, yeah, you're right. Was, you're right. What was his biggest flaw? What was his biggest flaw coming out of Ohio State? He was raw. Now you bring rawness into something and new learning, new learning, new learning, new learning. And I'm like, and when I watched, I said, you know, I went back and studied him towards the end of the year. Just Fields does some pretty dynamic things, you know, with his legs and his arm, you know, um, but I'm not in that meeting room to have, and that's where people that have been around him are going to have to make this call. And that's why I, I just talked about that mental toughness of Caleb Williams. I mean, the, the, getting to know these players and talking to these players and doing things that we don't have access to, which there's great value to, too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. That's going – something in that – in those meetings is going to be the final – the whatever becomes the final straw. You know, rather, we're going to move on and we're going to start over here. And I can see that there are some – things that Caleb does that Justin doesn't do that would lead you to believe, listen, I can develop that. I'm going to, cause every coach believes they can develop it and then they, they can, they can fix it. You know, it's going to be, uh, which one do they think they can do it best with and which player do they think is going to probably have the most ownership in the aspect and they have the best way to, to work with, you know, and I don't know, have that luxury of knowing that. Um, but that to me is what it's going to, to come down to.